Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to episode 139 of Dev Chatter. Hi, welcome. Uh, as many of you I'm sure know, my name is Brendan. Uh, it, it, it says it right here below me. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to welcome everybody to Dev Chatter today. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you to uh, follow along, contribute, ask questions in the chat. You can just watch silently if that's what you'd prefer. Uh, if you are in the future watching a recording of this, either on Twitch or on YouTube, hello. Uh, I hope the future is nice. So, right now, today, it is, uh, what, it's Monday, uh, November the 12th, and uh, as Crimson Green just mentioned in the chat, uh, your start time dashboard is still wrong. Oh, son of a, did they not use real time? Well... I have a project that I am planning on working on where I will be fixing that exact problem. Uh, will is probably correct. Let me take a look. So what Will is referring to, uh, as we scroll down here, get out of here. This says I start at 1 p.m. Well, that is not correct. I don't start at 1 p.m. That's just wrong. I will fix that. Thank you for bringing that to my attention there, Will. Uh, hello, uh, greetings. Uh, I saw Gareth say hi, Crimson Green, Coated Beard Will, and uh, Robert. Hello, Robert. Greetings. Hopefully everybody's having a pretty good uh, Monday. Uh, I know there was some not-so-great news that Crimson Green just mentioned, uh, and that is the passing of Stan Lee. I have not had the chance to look into that yet. Um, but yes, uh, among the uh, nerd, geek, whatever you want to say community, uh, this is definitely... Uh, um, well, we'll say pay F, uh, press F uh, to pay respects, as uh, Crimson did in the chat there. Uh, but we are still going to be doing a good, uh, fun bit of coding here today. Uh, so, greetings, welcome everyone, glad to see you are all here. I want to talk about a couple of things just before we get started. Uh, and that is, if you don't know, if you are new here, uh, as I said, welcome couple of things I want to mention. First off, all the code that we do here on the stream is out on GitHub, so you can find it at github.com slash devchatter, and if you want to chat with me or anyone else here in the chat, uh, maybe you want to coordinate with us and work on one of our projects, the best way to do that is to join our Discord, and I've linked that in the chat as well. Uh, all these links that I mention are down below the stream or video uh, as well, so please feel free to take a look at those. Okay, uh, so... The thing that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned, uh, tomorrow is going to be uh, a special episode of Dev Chatter, uh, and by that I mean we are going to have a guest here on the stream tomorrow. Uh, so we are going to have uh, Rachel, who was supposed to be here last Tuesday, we were hoping, uh, but uh, she was sick then, and then I got sick and I missed a stream, and anyway, um, she will be joining us tomorrow instead. So tomorrow, uh, that'll be Tuesday, November 13th, uh, we will be doing our uh, pair programming uh, stream with Rachel. So that should be good. All right, let me go ahead and update that. So you can see our schedule right here. Uh, I have not decided yet what I'm doing with our Saturday episode, November 17th. Uh, I am either canceling or rescheduling. I may move that to Friday. So um, it, it's either going to go to Friday uh, or Sunday or get canceled, one or the other. Okay. Let's jump into some code. Uh, actually, let me make sure I didn't miss anything in chat. Last hour checking my time. Uh, did he start? Did he start? Did he start? Oh, sorry, Will. Sorry. 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 <laughs> okay. So, quick little thing. Uh, I want to update everybody to where we were in our coding. Uh, so, we were working on this uh, stream overlay game. And if you don't know what that means, uh, what we're talking about when we say a stream overlay game... Hey, Rubik's! Uh, welcome. Thank you for that uh, five months of Twitch Prime. Much appreciated. <laughs> Pog indeed. Uh, and yes, I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do for a, uh, a Pog emote at some point uh, if we can get ourselves to partner here on the stream. And uh, good evening, Ancient Coder. Welcome. Okay. So, this game that we're making is designed for people to be able to play in chat. So, you are going to be able to play it using the chat window, using just text commands. 
Uh, likely what we'll do to make things easier is make it so you can say how many moves you want to do in a given direction. Uh, or maybe it'll be a series of commands. So maybe it'll be like move and then we'll say like right, 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 left, up, down, right, left, you know, something like that. Where you'll put in a series of commands or maybe it'll be like, you know, we'll just have like move right one and then, you know, uh, so actually it might be like move right, uh, right, four, and then, you know, your next command might be like move up or something like that. But we'll come up with some way of making it so that um, interfacing with it isn't a pain. Uh, I just haven't decided yet necessarily what that is. Uh, so clearly when we're playing it just while I'm testing it as we're developing, uh, we have arrow keys that we can press. So I can just use arrow keys to just run straight to this exit. Uh, and I can come up here and I can do that. Uh, and I notice for some reason we're not getting items appearing, so I'll have to take a look at that. But uh, either way, there is a more significant thing that uh, is a bug that we want to get resolved. Uh, so something that we were working on in the game last time is the... How to describe this? Maintaining your inventory if you escape. So if you manage to uh, survive and get to your destination, we want you to take your items with you. So in this case, you'll notice I still had one sword use left. So I should be able to re-enter the game with that item. And so notice the problem, though, is it's mentioning that I have zero use swords. So uh, the problem is that when we come back in the game, it's recording those and keeping them around. So... Uh, the initial ones did not get destroyed correctly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our zero-use ones out of the database because we did fix uh, that issue where uh, you could have a zero-use item left over. So that's gone. Uh, so let's open up the game, and I'm just going to delete that record because that is a record from when we had that bug. Uh, so if I open up inventory items and we take a look at the data... Uh, you'll see that we have a bunch of, like, sword uses, this is swords available for, uh, survivor number one. Uh, obviously, survivor number one is me. Uh, so I'm actually just going to delete all of this, because what we have is, these are the swords that I, I entered with, right here. That's my two uses and zero, and this is what I left with. Uh, so none of that is correct. Let's first off get rid of all of these ones. So we're gonna delete that. And we're going to delete this. So what I want to do uh, to make the change, we need to make sure that if you left with no items or you died, that your inventory gets emptied out. So no matter what, step one, when we get this data up to the server, we're going to delete all of your inventory. So that's step one. Step two is going to be adding in the new inventory items that you left with. So whatever you have saved up is gone. You are reset back down to... Uh, what you escaped with. So let's take a and, and and if you died, you don't get to keep your items. So uh, let's take a look at that. So we want to go to the wasteful hub, and we're going to want to extract out this code. Uh, so maybe we'll start there, because right now I've got the code inside the hub, and that really doesn't make sense, as the whole responsibility of the hub is just to be the interaction layer. So let's pull this out into something else. Uh, so, let's do, um, I don't know exactly what I want to call this yet. Um, uh, this is part of the survivor, really. This is part of their inventory. So maybe it goes as part of the survivor uh, repo? And we update them to always, so whenever we update the survivor, we, we delete all of the record, all of their uh, inventory except what they've got now. Uh, so that could be. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking.
I want to make something. Maybe this will maybe this will end up going in the survivor repository. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be separate. Let's make a class real fast. So we're going to make a class. We're going to call this um, uh, do something class. Right. So that should be really obvious that we're not keeping that name. Uh, the do something class. And I'll figure out what it does here in a second once I get the content in it. So I know some people that work the other way and they like to write out the comments, which I usually, I, I'll do that sometimes also, uh, but I usually like to just make a thing. I'm like, I know I need a thing for this to get extracted. Let's see what pulls nicely into it. And then, and then we'll take a look at that. So when the game ends, uh, we want to, um, do something. Uh, what do we want to do? Um, uh, ch -ch 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 update. Uh, apply. Uh, escape changes. And maybe this lives on the on the on some kind of uh, the survivor objects. I don't I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so I want to say apply escape changes is going to be public void apply escape changes. And then I think I want to do apply uh, death change, um, died changes. So then all we, so then the only difference that we actually have, um, because we can't, we, we can either create a polymorphic object for this where we have something that handles each one, or we can just have methods that handle a, an escape and a death. And either one is a possible way of handling this. Uh, without having a bunch of switches uh, because we don't want to have switches in a whole bunch of places that's really ugly code and no matter whether you do it polymorphically or not that's basically what we're going to end up with is one or the other depending on what kind of data we get so let's go ahead and um, figure out based on the end type which one we should be doing and maybe these are going to be the same but for now I'm going to just apply an escape no matter what, and then we'll look at the end. So we're gonna start here and then figure out how to get both. Uh, because the escape's more interesting because we get to keep our items. Okay, so let's pull this, all of that code for now. Um, oh, that's using that one. Uh, that's a great point. We made a new uh, repository for a reason. So let's use the survivor repository here. Um, so we're going to use the survivor repo instead of the instead of this repo. And I'm just noticing my color coding is really messed up in Visual Studio right now. Um, so here's what I'm going to do, everybody. I am going to kill the bot, and we're going to restart Visual Studio because my color coding is all kinds of messed up. So let me go ahead and do that, and we'll go ahead and restart that. So VS 2017, go! All right, there we go. <laughs> exactly, Janescu. Go, go, go! Alright. Um, Let's open up the game. Open up the game. Bring back up or do something. Uh, Janisku, I just closed the Visual, Visual Studio that's running that. Okay, let me comment this out. Um, we'll bring that in in a second. Actually, I'm going to delete that whole thing because that is part of the other class. Um, so when I when I fix it here, it'll be fixed over there. Okay, so. Here's what I want to do. I want to say uh, survivor dot get or create uh, and so that was pulling by user ID. Um, 
I don't have a chat user, I have a user ID. So I'm going to say user ID. Uh, we'll say by user ID for now. Not huge on that name, but when I do it, we'll see what happens with it. So get or create by user ID will get me this. And what I want to do is take the Oh, no, I need to take, uh, nope, I can't do by user ID. Um, I need a, I need a, a display name and a user ID. So we'll do that. So if by some stretch of the imagination, we don't have their user at this point, we will create it. Uh, so we're going to do get or create, and we're going to pass in display, uh, player name user ID. So we're going to pass those in. And then this is going to create one like that. Uh, actually, get a create, get a create. Uh, I'm going to extract this as a parameter, uh, and let's say user ID is the name of that parameter, which means I don't need user ID here, because I wasn't really using it. And then this one, going to extract uh, display name, and then I'm going to extract user ID. So I'm going to extract those as parameters, and when I do it, you'll see that we end up with those two parameters, and as soon as I do, this goes gray. And it says, oh, you don't need chat user anymore, and I say, good, I didn't want it. So my get or create now looks like this, which I can, uh, whoops, let me leave that there. We're gonna copy and paste it down here. And instead of saying chat user dot user ID, I'm just going to say user dot ID. And instead of saying chat user dot display name, I'm just going to say display name. And again, here I'm going to use that as well. So now you might be looking at this and say, oh, wait a minute, hang on a second. Then you can just call it from this one. And I say, yep, I totally can. Uh, so now I can say return get or create. And this just becomes an overload uh, that uses those values. when they're needed. So this is now the real version uh, and that is just a way of conveniently passing in the data together if you happen to have our um, model object the chat user. So chat user or you could pass in their individual values both of them work. So nice. I like that change that's good and that made these more accurate so they're now so because they're private I don't mind them necessarily exposing what values are needed uh, this I I want this to be the less called uh, of these two methods so I want people to prefer passing in the model object even though there's an extra method call that doesn't really worry me I'm not terribly concerned about the performance of, of that call uh, this isn't going to be happening that frequently uh, it's not like this is done inside of a loop over massive amounts of data. Okay, so if I go back here, uh, you'll see that it's trying to create this survivor right here, which, no, we don't need to do that. Uh, so, we remove that. Uh, yes, Ancient Coder, two methods with the same name just creates an overload uh, of that. So, essentially, if you call them now, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. So, when I call get or create. Uh, so for anybody that's not a uh, a like C-sharp dev or, or anything like that, when I call get or create, it now lists both methods. And it shows me I could pass either chat user or I could pass uh, display name. And either one is valid. So, and I can, I can select these. Uh, hey, simple dev, welcome. Greetings. Okay, so there we go. So... 
uh, we won't have this new this uh, you know needing to create it. Uh, essentially, all we're going to do is we always have the survivors, so we are going to add the game records and the inventory items and update. So let's do that. So we'll never be in that uppercase there. So we'll always be in this case. Get out of here, stupid warnings. Okay, so there we go. Much better. Um, that or nothing, and then this one, that's fine. That's just the message. Okay, so let's take this code. This is the code that I wanted to move somewhere else. Uh, Janisku, feels, which feels? There are a lot, of, a lot of feels, people unhappy about a lot of things. Okay, so um, uh, we're gonna create a C tour here, and in my C tour, I want to take in ah, uh, uh, what do we take in? We want some kind of a repo, which I guess will make this the survivor repo. Oh, what the? Oh, I did that outside of there. Derp, derpy derp, derp. Derp, derpy derp, derpy derp. I was like, why did that not help me at all? And that would be why. Okay, so that's survivor repo. And survivor repo. I'm gonna create a field for that. Okay. Uh, real life superhero Stan Lee. Oh, yes, Janiski. We talked about that at the, at the beginning. Um, yep. There likely won't be any more cameos. Uh, please feel free to pay F to pay respects in the chat, everyone. Uh, we'll definitely be missed. String, uh, player name, string, user ID. Um... Uh, we're going to create the game end record over here too, actually. So, to be honest, I'm actually taking most of this stuff with me. Because we're mostly just doing all the log moving all the logic out here so it's not in there. Uh, we don't need end type, we called that separately for it. So, level number and items. Okay. Uh, get or create based on the player name and the user ID. Did I not pull points? Oh, points was the beginning. That's weird. I should change that structure. Level number, points, and then items. Okay, so player, level number, points, items. Okay. Uh, end type. Uh, we know what type it was at this point because this is an escape. Uh, so let's actually create something about this. So um, even if I don't end up with a model about this, let's create um, I'm going to make a folder of enums for now. Um, not huge on putting enums in the in the namespace, which is what that's going to do. Um, but I'm not really sure where I want this to live yet. So, And I'd rather have it uh, structured this way than not have the structure at all uh, right now. So we'll call this end type. And we'll have died and escaped. And maybe more end types later. So for now we'll do this. And in order to make sure that these uh, end up with the numbers with numbers that uh, we like we're gonna do that so we're gonna set them to the numbers that we want them to be uh, although likely we'll try to use these based on string anyway okay uh, so died escaped there we go so end type equals um, 
escaped and type dot um, escaped oh whoops almost messed that up uh, I pluralize my enums usually end types dot escape we'll rename the file to match that type there we go end types escaped now the game record object is still using end type as a string which I'll see if I can get away with that. Uh, there's something I don't remember, which is um, EF core uh, enum uh, name. I want to see if I can get it to use these based on value conversions. That might be what we want. So, um, figure a value converter. Uh, that's kind of cool. So, uh, mount has conversion uh, two string and oh nice nice that is cool I heard coding hey welcome greetings uh, love it love love the way they define that uh, so specify on the property that has a conversion for that that's that's beautiful um, I would love that more general for enums and things like that but that will do that will do Okay, um, so let's, first off, this code doesn't live here anymore. We're, we're moving that out. Um, so that's gone. So that's going to greatly simplify that hub. Uh, and then over here in our do something class that needs to eventually get a name, um, we're using that. Let's jump over to our data context, just over here. And if we do our on model creating like this, we can. Oh, I'm just going to click that copy. Let's see if that does it. There we go. So on model creating, our entity is not writer. It is going to be uh, game end record. Uh, it does not have a property. Uh, so let's do. I'm just going to make this X. Uh, so when when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing lambda expressions uh, and I'm and I'm doing this kind of variable creation for a lambda expression, you're defining the variable that you're using. In this case. Uh, what I tend to do is this. If I'm going to be doing something with it other than just selecting a value off of this, which is what we're doing here, uh, or I think it's going to need additional clarity, I will put the name of what it is. Uh, so, you know, I, I could, for example, have called this a game end, right? And we could say game end, game end mount. Uh, but since it is just selecting the property we're doing here like this, I just leave it as X and I don't worry about it. Um, so X is my I didn't care what it was. Uh, if I'm doing something more complex and we're keeping track of multiple different values, I'll at least, at minimum, start it with the letter that it begins with. So this could be like a game end record or something like that. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave it as X. And this has an end type. And end type has a conversion, and I'm not going to use a V here. Um, I might just use. Uh, actually, I might use E. Actually, I'm going to write enum. Uh, can I get away with that? No. Uh, we're going to do E then. And then that'll be E as well. No. Uh, type of. So our type is an end types. Enum is need, needs to be imported system enum, so that'll add uh, system up to the top, right there. Which I'm actually going to shift that around to the bottom. Uh, that's true, Will. I could do at enum. You can do like at enum or at class, but I'm not a big fan of of doing that. Um, I had to do that one time in a project where uh, they wanted to do they needed a variable named case because they were working with cases. Uh, it was it was legal cases. 
And so we had to do this, and man, that got so annoying after a while. And you'd be writing it all over the place, and you'd just be like, at case, oh jeez, I can't believe I have to write at case again. It It's really annoying. I'm not, like... <laughs> It's the price you pay for having some uh, reserved words, but hey, you can get around it. Uh, yeah, I so I, I don't want to use at enum. Uh, I think at e is good enough. I could I could just make these x again also if I wanted, and it's not really a big deal because uh, just x two string and that. But I I kind of like that better. So that is e, and then this one is actually I'm gonna name this s. Because that's the string. That's the enum, that's the string. Um, and that should be fine. So, because this converts from enum to string, and that's from string to enum. So, there we go. So that's the conversion of this to a string type. Uh, and uh, MGYR, welcome. Thank you very much for that follow. Greatly appreciated. Uh... F sharp lets you do enum with a tick at the end. Nice. Well, that works pretty well, Will. Uh, that actually is much nicer than doing an at sign at the beginning. Uh, okay. So that'll get us our our data to work the way we want it to. Should. Uh, here's the way we're going to check that. Oh, I just realized I haven't even put the bot in there yet. Well, that's convenient. Uh, because I want to do this. Uh, we're gonna say uh, that I not leave the I didn't leave the data context open. That's funny. Okay, uh, we're gonna come down here to the package manager console and we're gonna say add migration test. And we're gonna say dash context is game data context, and we'll see if it figures it out. It has us in the web project right now, uh, but I'm hoping the fact that we defined uh, context. Uh, and when I say we're in the web project, I mean up here we have the default chosen. Okay, so it didn't find it. Uh, but we can do this to make sure it does, which is choose the right project, and then just specify the data context that we want it to pick. So uh, it should have created this. I want to see basically nothing happen. Alter column. Nullable false. Okay, so we switched it from, uh, non, from nullable to non-nullable is the only change. Um, which, that's fair. Um, we are going to make it non-nullable. It definitely is when you set it to an enum value. So, um, okay. Especially with how we wrote our conversion. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and undo that change. So, we're going to pick those three files that are uh, the migration. Uh, the EF core migration there. We're going to come back down here and we're going to give that a name. So what is this? This is um, make uh, end type. Let's say game end type uh, non nullable. And we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that uh, that change again. So make game end type non-nullable. Game end type end type non-nullable. Okay. I think that'll work. Uh, now to figure out what the heck we're doing with this. So I put this code in here because I want to apply an escape. Uh, but I almost feel like we need the survivor to be treated more like an aggregate. Let me see what's on the survivor. So survivor has some properties. He has a team. He's got money. Uh, we have try to pay. That's interesting that I wrote that that way, but that's fine. Um, let's let's try putting it on here. So we'll say apply escape changes. Um, that's not going to be what we call it when it's here. Held item DTO is not correct. Uh, I don't want this to come in this way. The DTO, DTO should not live past the interaction layer. So whatever, so DTO, for those of you that don't know what that means, that's a data transfer object. So 
Um, it's it's a term that I like, uh, and it's a way of defining, hey, there's a boundary. This, this isn't necessarily going to pass this data the way we want it to, uh, but hopefully it's going to be pretty close. Uh, so we create an object just to handle that. Um, usually the reason you do this is because your model object often includes more information than you want uh, the source to be able to send. In this case, we're not worried about it, so you do that for security reasons, like uh, the transfer object, for example, might not include IDs, so that a user can't try to modify those values, and you don't have to check it on the server because you didn't even accept that value. That wasn't even an option, so you don't need the, the check for it. It wasn't there to begin with. Okay, so let's jump over to uh, what we want instead, which is inventory item. So we'll switch that to inventory item. So apply this. So we no longer need to do this conversion. So we're just going to add in the items. But you'll remember I said that we do not want to keep anything uh, that was there before. So let's go ahead and clear out the inventory items and then we'll add that range. So we're going to say survivor.inventory items and I'm just going to clear. I don't care what was there before. Um, I want to get rid of them and then add this new set. And I think that EF is going to be smart enough to figure out that I did that and and make that be, hey, I set these new values. So delete all the olds, add in the new. So we only get to keep what we survived with. Uh, so we're not using a survivor repo anymore. This comes out of here. This is applying to the survivor. So... We're in the survivor, so we don't need that. Uh, so we're gonna modify our game records, our inventory items, all from inside of here. So this becomes sort of our, our aggregate to some extent. This knows how survivors work. So apply escape changes. Uh, we're just gonna say, uh, we're gonna say escape. Or apply escape maybe? I'm gonna say apply escape. Now, I want to clarify what I use for naming. So, you guys may have noticed that I use the word apply. I really, really like it because if a method is going to modify something, I like to say apply. If I were passing in a survivor, you might take that to be, oh, you're going to modify the survivor. Now, um, if you're thinking static method, right? So, if I made a static method, I might say public static, you know, apply changes and take in a survivor uh, and, you know, some kind of changes, right? And when I write this, you can get the idea, oh, he's modifying the survivor object. There's going to be a side effect. Uh, and that kind of gives that information away right away. Oh, whoops. Let's make that valid, at least. Public static void. Uh, and so you get the impression when you read it, oh, apply, apply changes, right? Oh, okay, so he's modifying the survivor with this new value that he's added, the KFH value, right? Contrived scenario. But the point being that you understand that. Um, so when you do want to modify something, you say it. So in this case, um, I'm doing, uh, essentially, I'm saying, hey, we're escaping, but right, like, the escape, uh, calling escape on the player doesn't make sense, but... I want to apply the updates of, of that an escape happened. Uh, so I want to make it clear, oh, we're modifying the class of which this is a member. So survivor is getting modified here, is what I'm saying when I use that name. Okay. So this no longer exists. We're going to delete this. Good. Had a crappy name to begin with. Okay. Inside of the hub... We're going to put back what was here before. Kind of. Okay. We no longer need to create the game record. I just want to get the survivor now. So we're going to get the survivor, like so. Once we have the survivor, I want to apply an escape on him which I realize I don't need to pass in the player name or the user ID or anything like that. These values are not needed. Uh, because we already got that data. 
The survivor's already here. We don't need that. So we just need level number points and items. There we go. So that's actually a, a nice change. So that's level number, points, and items. Now, oh look, look, red squiggly. Hey, hey, there we go. Uh, so that's exactly what we wanted there. If we look over here, you'll notice I'm adding range. And if we look at the definition of the add range method, you'll see it just needs an I enumerable of inventory items. So that means that's all I need up here. I just need an I enumerable of inventory items. So I can be a little friendlier in my uh, parameter list to any callers. So I'm gonna do that. And then over here, I am going to convert this. And one of the best ways to convert lists of data to a new type inside of um, uh, C Sharp is to use link and use the select statement. So one of the best ways to do that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna say uh, held item DTO dot, uh, ooh, not from, um, Let's do this, x dot to inventory item. There we go. I meant to go that way. Uh, so I put on our DTO a method that'll take uh, an inventory, will take this DTO and convert it to our model object. So that will get me that little switch and then I can just pass that in. And if I really wanna see that separately, uh, cause I think I want that clarity, I could do this. Um, items to uh, so that's um, inventory items we'll say yeah we'll say inventory items and we'll apply that when we when we escape okay so there we go uh So game end gets called from there, and then that gets called, and then that actually works out reasonably nicely. This could almost get extracted into a method and put somewhere else, but I don't want to move that just yet. Okay, so once I've made this change, I've applied to the escape, so that's going to create those objects that are going to do what we want from having escaped. Um, I need to save this object. Well, here's the problem. I don't have a way to do that right now. So I am gonna create that, which I'm not big on, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna say game repository. Uh, yeesh, yeesh. I might need to go another route on this one. Is an EF generic repository of type survivor? Or EF game repository of type survivor? Oh, no, it's just, uh, it is an EF game repository do that? No, because then it's not a survivor one. It could apply to any object. Because we didn't make it a generic repository. We made it a repository that uses generics. Okay, so this is going to have one of those. Um, and our interface doesn't have it either. Okay. Well, in that case, we're doing this. Um... Uh, we're going to call update uh, with the object you pass in, which is going to be a survivor. Uh, which I'm not super keen on. Um, Yeah, 
Yeah. <clears throat> don't know what that. Don't know what that's gonna do. Um. Don't. Don't like that I had to do it that way. Um. We may need to. Uh. I might change how we're doing our data access in this one just a little bit. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and test this, and while we do. Uh, I'm going to mention a couple of things. First off, uh, I want to post a couple of links in the chat there. Uh, as soon as the bot gets started, I'm actually going to post those links in the chat. Uh, so we're going to post those links right there. There we go. Uh, those are links to our Discord and our GitHub. So if you are so inclined and want to either contribute to or look at any of our code, it's out there on GitHub at github.com slash devchatter. And if you are interested in chatting with me or any of the other uh, people that are here in the chat today, one of the best ways to do that is to head on over to our Discord, and that is a chat application linked there in the chat as well as down below the stream, uh, where we can discuss... Oh no, my sword didn't work. My sword's not dying. My sword is lasting forever. I don't know how my sword is lasting forever, but somehow it is. Uh, we'll have to look on that. My sword wasn't getting destroyed. Alright. Um, so that means I probably left with a sword while holding a zero strength sword. Okay. Derp. Uh, Alright. So I still want to test that that inventory is mostly working. So let's take a look at our data here. So we should have one record for this uh, survivor. So if we open up our inventory and view the data of this. No! Survivor ID null, what? Okay, so it didn't delete it. It, um... It just disassociated it from the survivor. Uh, cause we said it was, al we must have said it was allowed to be null. Um... Maybe that's for... Hang on. I think I might know why. I think I might know why. Let's go to our inventory items. Let's remove Survivor from that, because we never access it anyway. Uh, Highlander. Yes. Highlander. Exactly. Um, add migration... Test. Ooh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm going to search for this line in this class. I need to go to the model snapshot. Is that fixed? There we go. Okay. That's why I should commit before I do that. Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, inventory item, that's going to get Survivor back. So that change will not be there. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, we're not committing those yet. That's just some stuff I was working on. Uh, so we're going to allow applying escape. And... Okay, so this is... Um, uh, extracting... Uh, so we're extracting, um, uh, ch -ch 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 game end, uh, code, uh, extracting game and recording. That's 
how we record a game end is what we're changing. Okay, so now I want to remove that. So goodbye, survivor. You're not going to be on there. Uh, I'll keep it and hang on. So we've got that. We're going to do this. Uh, we want that to be non-null. So let's go over to our... Let's go to our data context. So game data context is right here. And inside of this, we need to define on our model builder We'll say model builder dot, dot entity, uh, and the type is the inventory item. And we're going to say on the inventory item, there is a property that it has that is. Wait, what? Oh, I just removed it. Yep. Hang on. Survivor. and is required so we're gonna go ahead and tell the tell EF hey on our inventory item please make sure that you're requiring that there is a survivor on this thing and now my hope is that when I do that when I remove it from the survivor that it nukes it uh, if not then I'm gonna have to get rid of this myself um, uh, Lazos, um, so uh, there are a handful of ways to learn how to code. Um, one of those actually is that we do a follow a, a series of follow along streams here on Dev Chatter. Uh, so that's one way. If you take a click, if you uh, use that link that I just posted in chat, uh, you can find out about when we're going to do those. I need to schedule the next one. Uh, we're going to do a handful of those. Um, and it's basically on stream I am teaching someone else how to code and we have everybody else in the audience follow along. Uh, what we're going to do as well uh, is, um, uh, Will, I'm, I'm actually going to be scheduling Bubs to come back on. We're actually going to keep working with him. Uh, so anyway, uh, there are also some other websites like uh, Code Wars uh, is an interesting place and Coding Game uh, is another one uh, and there are a whole bunch of other places. <laughs> Ronan, uh, do want I'm not planning on doing a, a, a learn to code in C. Uh, I I haven't actually used C or C plus plus in a good number of years. Actually, the closest uh, I've done to using those lately is Objective C, and and even that's been a handful of years. Um, I still know how to use the languages, and the syntax is familiar, so I can still read C and C plus plus. I watch a couple of streamers that use it. Um, and uh, Plutonin, uh, yes, so as part of our last one, I did end up uh, doing some basics on ASP.NET. Uh, we were using ASP.NET Core, and I'll probably be doing the same. Uh, so that's intro to, like, programming using C Sharp, and then I also want to do uh, intro to web development in ASP.NET. Uh, so we're going to look at ASP.NET Core. Uh, we'll probably cover HTML, CSS, that kind of stuff in those. Uh, but... Uh, I want to teach people the basics of programming first uh, because I can always point back to those um, as we start this other the, the other part as well. Uh, so uh, because obviously if you're going to do ASP.NET you need C Sharp for the server side code. Okay, so that will get us those. Let me go ahead and run this. Uh, make type non nullable. We're going to run it this time and now I think it's going to work. So it should create those, uh, assuming that it didn't just bomb, which it did. Uh, so hang on, I need to kill the bot uh, because in order for an EF core migration to work, uh, I need to be able to build the project. And when the bot is actually running, it's holding on to the binary files that are built so when you compile the project it creates binary files and in order to make that happen I need to let EF Core build it. Uh, did that not work? 
the property is of type survivor, which is not supported by current database provider. Either change the property. Wait, what? Uh, inventory item, survivor? Well, alright, we're gonna do that then. Goodbye. You're not even gonna have it. We're just gonna get rid of it. Goodbye. Get out of here. So, if we get rid of it, what's it wanna do? Oh, what? Did it actually make that migration? What? I didn't make that migration. Is it lying? What's it talking about? I am confused right now. Right there. I didn't commit that, did I? Maybe I did. Oh, make game end type non-nullable. Uh, yep. Test. <laughs> that's why you call it test. Okay, so it doesn't think I did anything here, and that's potentially fine. Let's put this code back in. So, entity property that, uh, but I don't think that's going to be there. Key constraints, hang on. Uh, Ronan, another thing I need to learn is Git and GitHub. Uh, Ronan, uh, you can actually take a look. I have a Pluralsight course that talks about GitHub. It is called GitHub for Windows Developers. Uh, I will tell you that the concepts all work even if you're not a Windows developer uh, because Git and GitHub remain the same. Uh, even just enough to save my code for college. Yep. Uh, Ronan, it would definitely cover that. Uh, we use Git for all the stuff we do here on the stream. Uh, so feel free to watch what we do here. Um, has foreign trait name, has many, has one, has foreign key, that. Uh, but I want to require it. Uh, EF core foreign, uh, foreign key uh, required. Uh, maybe non-null. There you go. How do you make foreign key as not null in EF core migrations with data annotations? Uh, we're not using data annotations, but... Nope. That's awesome. Probably not, no. Huh. Okay, well, I'm not gonna worry about it. We'll, we'll let it disappear that way. Um, here's the problem. Uh, what that means is we're gonna need to remove these directly. And I don't like that. Um, I want I want these value objects to be managed by the survivor. Whatever its list is, this is the source of truth. So when I clear that, I want them gone. And there really should be a way to do that. Uh, no, not not is required. Is uh, yeah, is required. You're telling me it can't can't build with this? So first off, let me undo my test change here, which is this, which didn't change anything really.
We're going to try that again. We're going to go ahead and... Um, that's right behind me. Sorry about this, everybody. Um, yeah, wow, it doesn't like it. Survivor, which is not supported by the current... It is, it's right here. That's the type. Inventory items not on here, is it? Why isn't it on here? Oh, uh, it doesn't need its own table. It's not accessible on its own. Uh, inventory items only come back as part of the survivor. Same with those. Uh, they're all part of survivor. This is the aggregate. The rest don't go on the data context. Um, for the entity, so this is not on here. So for the entity survivor, um, so we have to define it this way because that's not on, that's not managed by this data context. Uh, has has many inventory items I don't want to define it this way so I guess if I want to do it the other way I have to make this happen so we have to add inventory items here. In order to be able to access it from this data context, we have to define it here, and then it should be able to work, but I don't like it being accessible here. Um, uh, maybe, uh, what is this? All right, we'll try it. So survivor, we're going to do it this way. So instead of doing inventory item survivor, we'll say survivor. We'll say has no, not has foreign key dot um, has many. Uh, inventory item uh, so we'll say item dot survivor uh, so in this case the reason why I named that so I talked about this earlier with lambdas um, when I use a lambda expression and I'm defining the parameter it has uh, if I'm just doing a selector, I use X unless I think the context could be confusing. So here, I want to make it clear that this is accessing an item off the I this is accessing a property of the item object, not off the survivor. So inventory, not survivor. I'm grabbing the survivor property on it. Um, So this would be a has a foreign key, I guess? Uh, and for the has many, can I, no? So that's the foreign key, so this has foreign key with that. And we'll try is required. Whether the foreign key property can be assigned null. Yeah, okay. Let's try that. 
Uh, did we leave any changes out here? Nope. Okay, so let's do this again. We're going to attempt another time to make this migration work, and it still doesn't like it. Survivor cannot be used as a property on the entity type because it is configured as a navigation. Uh, we're going to ask uh, the interwebs what the heck that means, because that is a description that doesn't help me. Cannot call properties of them because it is configured as a navigation property. There we go. Lovely. Uh, you can't use SQL bytes type as a primary. Uh, that doesn't help me at all. That did not help me one bit, guys. That had no no description to what I was looking at. And I'm not even sure it really helps that person either. Has field of navigation properties. Okay, that might... Um... Uh... Has... <laughs> you can absolutely say that if you like. Field name, survivor. Survivor ID is required. Survivor ID, survivor ID. do if I do that. So even if there's a JavaScript expert, right, is JavaScript engines of today, uh, are they smart enough to optimize, optimize these kinds of expression? Uh, you know, fuels enable? I don't know if it'll optimize that. Uh, you would want it to, but I, I'm not, I'm not 100% that it would. Um, and the challenge is that uh, you'd have to hope that everyone would do it because that code would end up on uh, on various different browsers. Okay. We'll try it this way. Nope, doesn't like it there either. Specified field could not be, f could not find survivor on inventory items. Couldn't find that that field. To guess it's not a field, it's a property. It has many inventory item. 
inventory item include here? No. Let's add it back in. So we have inventory items with one, with one survivor. The code is generated by Transpower. I'm testing. I'm wondering if I need to invest into finding another pattern that transpiles different kind of code. Uh, what I would find out, so what I would wonder is whether it does that optimization. Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, I swear I tried this. Uh, so that drops, 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 reading of table, inventory item to inventory items. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then renames the index, add the column int, add foreign key, add foreign key. Add foreign key. EF, you're getting real dumb here. You're getting really dumb. Adds a foreign kit. Why do you need this new column, you piece of trash? Foreign key. Drop the primary key. Rename the table. Okay, I get why you renamed the table. Let me let me take that out of the, the equation. We're not going to rename the table. We'll simplify that every once in a while this uh, EF my so oh man I get so irritated by some of this stuff sometimes I try to keep my cool but man sometimes tech just really works against you <laughs> all right so it's wanting to create a new column that's way simpler good okay so wants to create this new column ID 1 uh, because it thinks we can't use the previous one. It's trying to create a new foreign key, but not get rid of the old one. So it thinks I want a new foreign key on this. Because it doesn't want to get rid of the old one. Now, I like that it's doing that. Okay, so when we added inventory, generation identity column said that was nullable true. Why did it say that? On delete restrict. Ah oh, man. Entity framework. Can't you just play nicely? I'm about to toss you. I'm about to toss you. Alright, we're gonna ignore that for now. We won't even deal with it. <laughs> hey, Stoolpenner, welcome. 
Uh, you just missed me yelling at uh, Entity Framework for uh, not working correctly. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Alright, so let's just do this. We're going to do it manually, and I'm going to be angry about it. So we're going to clear out those, we're going to add these, and it's going to treat those as null entries. Which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Uh, yeah, exactly, David. No, I see. So yeah, <laughs> you are. You are correct. I, it's really annoying. Uh, how like I don't understand why it's that difficult. It should not be that difficult. Uh, it should be way easier than what they just did there. But whatever. Um, I think part of the challenge is that. Uh, Entity Framework is not a money-making team at Microsoft. There's not a lot of money, like, as far as they're concerned, they don't care whether we use Entity Framework or any competitor at Entity Framework. That doesn't change the value proposition to Microsoft for the most part. Oh, yeah, I know, David. Uh, the, these same issues have been there for a long time. Uh, but database change management is going to be a problem for all of us for, for quite a few years still. Okay, so... I need to change how we do this. Uh, this trick I did here is not going to work anymore. Um, what I will have to do is this. Um, inside the survivor repo, uh, I need to, when I save, I want to just do um, game repository. Uh, I need to remove a whole bunch of extra data. It's just irritating. Uh, update doesn't do anything, does it? Realistically. You say, hey, take this object, update, save changes. Okay. Doesn't really do anything. Sort of a lie. Uh, we need to change a lot of this stuff. Uh, so, I will probably switch what we're doing over from using EF uh, in order to using Dapper. Uh, so, oh yeah, when EF works, it's nice. It can do a lot of great stuff for you. But man, when you run into problems with it, it is just pulling hair. And I don't, I don't get why they made it so hard. Uh, so, game repository... Um, Uh, instead of removing a list of items, can I... Hang on. Um... I want to go over here, so that's remove one item, that's remove a set of items, and... I think I'd actually rather remove based on a specification, if I can. Uh, they'll make me get the entities if I want to do it this way. All right. Well, that's a bummer. Why doesn't uh, Why doesn't it have a way to do that? Oh, actually, wait, wait. Maybe it's not under remove range. Nope. Okay. Well, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the uh, the simple way then. Uh, we're gonna say underscore game repository. Uh, no, we're gonna forget about it for now. We're gonna forget about it. We're gonna ignore it. It's not gonna be a problem. We're just going to pretend it didn't even happen. 
and we'll fix it afterwards, I guess. I'm not going to deal with this problem right now. We'll get it later. Um, ah, man. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Ronan. Yes. Uh, as Ancient Coder says, Pluralsight, you can check out my course. Uh, it's GitHub for Windows developers. Uh, it is out on Pluralsight. And uh, James is asking if there are any junior developers in the stream. <laughs> to find junior. Uh, and uh, welcome, Fuel. Uh, yeah, it is great to have junior developers here on the stream. That is fine. And I love the fact that you guys actually get to see that uh, no matter how many years you have under your belt, uh, you will still get frustrated by stupid things that exist in code. Uh, and you're like, why does this work this way? Why doesn't that work? So, uh, as Ancient Coder said, yeah, that's why I said it doesn't matter how many years you have. So Ancient Coder saying we're all juniors, but uh, it doesn't matter how many years uh, you have programming, you're still going to run into the same kinds of problems. So, uh, senior, Google faster. Not always. Sometimes it's uh, just n has more experience, knows more stuff, uh, more, more things to draw from. Uh, let's go ahead. I want to recheck that there are no changes before I move on. Let me make sure I didn't leave anything sitting here. Uh, and as Ronan mentions, yes, the seniors' experience lets them usually know what to Google a little bit better. Uh, that's one of the big ones. So let's remove those changes. They're not actually anything. And uh, let me check out chat. I see a bunch of stuff happening. Uh, so, uh, no one is an expert on everything, so we're all junior in one thing or another. Well said, Ancient Coder. Uh, no matter what level you are, Google is always there. Yes. Uh, do you think it's easier being a senior? Uh, I think usually senior devs are given, uh, at least should be given more challenges. <laughs> and Coded Beard gets to smash head against wall. He head meet wall. Okay, let's go ahead and run this again. Uh, I'm going to let inventory get messed up along the way and not worry about it just yet, and we'll deal with fixing that bug later. Uh, <laughs> and uh, David, I think a lot of developers would agree with that uh, sentiment of wanting to stay in the tech world and not dip into management. Uh, that's one of the challenges that a lot of us devs can have is that the business tries to get us to move into management uh, whether we want to or not. Okay, so I've got my zero sword here, uh, which I need to get rid of. I don't know why I still have a zero use sword, but we'll take a look at that data and see how I ended up with a zero use sword. Uh, view data. There's a zero use sword right there, so let's let's delete these two records. Oh, I bet it was cached. I bet that's what it is. Uh, whoops. I'm going to go ahead and stop the application. Okay, there's definitely no data in that table. We're going to go ahead and attempt to start at the bottom. It may not work first try because I haven't totally let it shut down just yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, seniors get paid more, hence have more responsibility. Uh, that, that's fair, Ancient Coder. Alright, we're gonna try that one more time. Oh, I shouldn't have closed that. Why did I close that? Ah! I needed that window open. I don't know where this is gonna go now. It went in there, and that's derpy. There's our overlay. Should be out there. Scroll down to the bottom. Okay, so there. It started up. Now let's take a look. Why aren't I getting my items created? I should be getting items. So for some reason, it doesn't want to create items, but it also didn't give me any inventory, which is good. I shouldn't have any inventory right now.
Okay, so I escaped. I have no items though, because it's not creating my items. So I need to figure out why, and it says nothing, so that's good. I should have escaped with nothing. Why didn't it create any items, I wonder? Let's take a look. I must have derped something in our item builder, so we'll take a look at that code. Item builder JS. Uh, oh, you know what? We're going to look at it over here. So we're going to open up sources. We're going to hide the console there. I apologize, everybody. When I show it in here, it gets really small, but this is the best place to tell what's going on with these. Uh, right. Level building, item builder. Right, we just switched to the new metadata, so let's... Create item of type, so there we go. And create item by name. So we're going to drop breakpoints on both of those. Um... Uh, not for Benny. Uh, also, welcome back, Not for Benny. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, going back to Dapper, do you have to manually write SQL queries to get data from the d from the database? Um, so, short short answer on that one, Not for Benny, is uh, not always. So sometimes you have to write SQL for it. Sometimes you don't. Um, so you're right. You do need to know SQL. Um, in order to use Dapper, which is one of the annoying parts of it, but if you are careful, you can keep it very limited. So what I like to do when I do that kind of thing is I like to keep uh, the areas where code is required to a minimum, and I like to minimize the amount of SQL that I have to write. Um, so if I use Dapper, I try to keep it hidden away so that 90% of the developers on the project don't ever even have to see the SQL, they don't have to work with it for most of what they're doing. Uh, my experience, uh, senior generally means has messed up enough times to know what to avoid. Uh, yes, coded and and coded beard pointing out the downsides of that. Uh, there there are some strong downsides. So, uh, senior developers uh, are often afraid of trying certain new things. They're afraid of jumping to things because they've been burned by something similar. Um. <laughs> okay, uh, so. Uh, let's go ahead and start this up again. All right, so when we come in here, the item type, uh, so we're asking for a weapon to be created. So we're starting out saying, hey, yep, give us a weapon. Um, item metadata. Uh, so let's step in where item type symbol weapon equals symbol weapon yep step over step over step over should be checked like six times the item data we created we said create an axe so then when we step into this and uh, welcome, uh, Hawk Armada. Thank you very much for that follow. Greatly appreciated. Uh, drop table customers. Best sequel. Very nice, Fuel. Yes. Uh, Chatosaurus Firestorm. All right. So we're supposed to create an axe for this level is what we're saying. So create that. Uh, there is no effect map, which means we're creating an item, not an effect item. Uh, with the name axe, uh, whoops, this dot underscore game is undefined. Oh no! Oh no! Why is game not defined? Well, we found the problem. Item Builder must have gotten created and used before we have our game. 
Um, so let's do this. Control Shift F. New. Whoops. End. End. We're gonna look for new item builder. Where was it? That's what created the problem for certain. This. Uh, oh, that's why we pass in. We now can just pass in this. This is the game. There we go. There's the change, because we created that at a new level. Instead of creating it in there, we created it here. And then that got passed into the level, which was using the game to create that. Okay, problem solved. There was my bug. Fixed. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh that. We're going to remove that breakpoint and the other one. That's why it wasn't creating them. Uh, at least I thought that's why I wasn't creating them. <laughs> Apparently that wasn't the only thing. Uh, so... Create item of type. Uh, we'll drop that there. And, um... Refresh the page. So, game is not null anymore. Uh, we definitely have our item... Item data. Turn back the item. This is an item with a pro with a name of axe. Uh, it's a symbol. It's a weapon. Where'd we put it? Uh, at zero zero. What? Why did we put it at zero zero? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, not for Benny. We've talked about it plenty of times before. Um, we're not planning on doing uh, TypeScript, certainly in the short term, but we might do some TypeScript long term. So, so this project's intentionally uh, vanilla JS, uh, but I do want to do uh, TypeScript in the long run. Uh, this context. Uh, so, oh, uh, David. So to explain context uh, within a within a class, there's no weirdness with this. So if you're using a class in ES6. Uh, the this is what you'd expect it to be uh, in that case. Um, I think senior dev means that uh, we are supposed to pick boring tasks like going to meetings and sleep through another reorg so the young guns don't have to. <laughs> uh, you need to. You need to. Have you thought about using TypeScript emo? Yeah, fuel snable. I know. Uh, <laughs> No, there's no command for uh, for asking that question yet. Uh, we'll think about it though. Uh, okay, so all right, uh, let me try that again. So we're gonna get down here. Uh, I want to step into the creation of this. So in here, uh, this oh, that's the sprite. The sprite has uh, an image. Oh, those have defaults. I should probably stop setting those. Step in again. This one is the item object. Name, game, sprite, type, pickup type. Effect types, we don't have any, and it has one use, and that's fine. Um, that's not an effect, so... Game and the sprite both exist. Uh, where did we say we were placing this? Uh, huh. Okay, so we're going to jump to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and let this step out. So we're going to return this item, and we're going to return it from here as well. And then we're going to create this. Uh, 
items. Ah, we returned back a single item instead of a collection of items. That's our problem. Uh, I can fix that quickly. Uh, we did change that. So if we go to our item builder, uh, we said get items for level. Um, we'll return that in an array and then suddenly everything will be fixed for certain uh, uses of the word fixed. There we go, items again. I'm not worried about getting hurt. I want to escape with the best sword I can, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to escape with a sword with two uses. Um, okay, so escaped with a sword. All right, uh, let's see. Here's my boss is asking me to reserve the cool tasks for new coworkers. The seniors can take the heavy slow tasks he thinks. I kind of agree with him. Uh, fuel stable, that's actually usually correct, and that does not necessarily define a line between senior and junior. Uh, sometimes that comes from experience on the project. So you might want so the newer person can work on the things that, that are easier to change, that don't require the breadth of knowledge about the project. And so that's one of the big things. Um, so today we're going to be discussing about an eager loading with EF, and remember you struggled with it. Uh, with that knowledge, I convinced my boss that we need to use include and was done with the task in no time. Uh, Crichton, yeah. Uh, so I always use includes with how I, I work with it. I like doing that. Uh, today at work, uh, let's see, I suppose that depends on your perspective. I prefer the massive, slow, sweeping changes over mucking around with the latest JS fad. Uh, Coded Beard, I'm not sure what you're talking, what you're talking about there, but... Of course, it doesn't distract from getting uh, to use the minor stuff, uh, just on a much larger scale and with risk of the business. Oh, yeah, so um, I would also agree, as a dev, it's kind of fun to occasionally work on the bleeding edge stuff, but there is something to be said for making sure you're using the mature uh, software that um, is going to be more reliable. Okay, let's take a look at what ended up in our database. Uh, so if we look at that, we have Survivor ID 1, a sword, and two uses. So that means if I start this again, I should come in with a sword and two uses. Now it has one use. Now I have a second sword. Why does my second sword only have two uses? I thought swords were supposed to have three uses. Empty slot. Okay, so the swords are dying, as they should. And I escape with a sword with two uses. So now you're going to see the bug that's going to exist in our database that I'm going to ignore for now. Um, as long as this continues to work the way I want it to. So Survivor ID now has a sword with two uses. The old record didn't die. So that's what that's what we were having a problem with in EF. Is it what, We were not able to easily get rid of this without changing the way that we wrote our code in such a way that I don't want to get into today. Uh, so this is kind of like... EF not working the way that we want it to and forcing us to work the way that it says we have to. Uh, so that's the problem I ran into there. Um, I am going to need to, uh, in, in order to get that fixed to working better, I'm going to need to talk with someone about that. But either way, what we're going to do right now, I'm going to refresh this. Two, and as, ah, so it's still drawing it that way. Why is it still drawing it as if there's a second item? Okay, so we get away with an axe with two uses now. Did I... So now when I refresh this, it should say there's an axe with two uses. And it's still showing a second item over there. 
Swords are getting created with two uses only. Now I've escaped with no items, and so I should enter the next game without any items. So if I look at this, yep, none of those are associated with me anymore. Okay, so first things first, let's figure out what is the deal with the, with that item value. Sword uses 3, axe uses 2, bat uses 1. Should totally be getting created with, uh, with 3 uses. Hang on one second, everybody. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so looking at this, so this right now, this, this is not long. This is going to all come out of the database at some point. We just put this in here because we needed some JSON data to get us started. Uh, and by coming out of the database, I mean it's going to come out of some kind of data store, even if that's just a JSON data file that, you know, has like the data that someone might come and modify, adjust the settings for their their version of the game. Um, so when you created the sword, it has that number of uses. Um, I need to check player inventory. Something is going on with player inventory in the game, and I want to see what it is. So it's definitely not working the way I expect. Uh, and while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to toss links in the chat, because I thought about it. Uh, so this is going to get committed as uh, fixing that bug. Uh, fix item creation bug. Okay. We're not going to let that go in. Um, do, 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 do. So when you pick up a sword, it should have three uses. Where is player inventory? If you push an item onto the inventory, uh, remove an item, we splice it out. So let's go back to the page. We are going to debug this again. Inventory, add item, and remove item. And I expect item to get removed when, when uh, the item is used. So this ought to add the item. So that pushes on an item. That's a two-use axe. So, perfect. So we pick it up, and our inventory shows two things in it. That's interesting. So our info page, we are showing the items. Let me, I'm gonna drop it one, so this is getting called all the time as it draws. So when I click here, this breakpoint's going to be immediately hit. So breakpoint's already hit, and we're looking at the list of items. You'll see that there's a single item in here. And when we draw the boxes for this, yeah, there's one. Draws the rectangle. 
Uh, so for each one item, should draw for that item, okay? So that's getting called constantly. That's why I said we we're gonna get caught by the breakpoint immediately. Uh, Crichton, why don't you tell us what uh, Panda does in Python? I don't actually know what that one does. Uh, there might be a library in C Sharp that does something similar. Okay, so I just used the second use of my axe, so I'm going to take a look and see. It should be removing the item. So this item should be the axe, and it's down to zero uses. So we're going to say find the index of this axe, and then we're going to remove it from the list. And then it's no longer going to be getting drawn. Okay. This is going to add an item uh, to my character. So when I do this, it should add in a bat. Uh, so this item should be a bat, and it should have one use. It has one use, and it is a bat. And I get killed because I step to where the bat was, and that guy kills me. So now if I start again... It gave me the... I still have the bat. Okay, so I think I know the problem. We're not totally clearing things between games. Uh, so that actually might be the issue. So inventory is not getting cleared when you die, and so when you start back up, I think you potentially still have that if we didn't refresh. So let's take a look at what happens when we get the next level. Uh, no, when we when we start up a new game. Uh, inside of Wasteful JS, when we start a new game. Oh no! Uh, I died with the bat. That's why. Uh, the JavaScript's fine. Never mind. Uh, I see in the chat there it says that I left with a bat. Uh, and we, we stored that. So we're not done on the server side, so let's go to the Wasteful Hub. So we're going to go to the place where our JavaScript game in our browser calls our C-sharp in the server to tell it what to record. So, oh, what do you think? Um, we apply an escape here. Hey, Ori, welcome. Greetings. <laughs> Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Hope your stream was good. Uh, do, 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 do. I, don't, I don't know what you I don't know what you streamed about today Ori um, I don't I don't I don't actually have that on my shout out I don't say what uh, what people stream Ori is a is a twitch streamer that does a lot of gaming streams usually the occasional music stream too uh, so uh, let's see end type uh, I want this to come in as the enum if I can. Um, for now, uh, is it okay to watch this stream naked? Uh, Precator, uh, to be honest, I don't really care as long as you don't tell me about it. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Specimen. Yeah, see, as, as I said, as long as you don't tell me about it, I don't really care. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. I understand that in Europe it is late at night, so you want to watch a stream in your PJs or something, that's cool. Whatever. Doesn't bother me. Uh, let's see. End types. So we'll say end types, end type. 
is the end type. And let's say uh, if oh well, now let's switch it. Make it clear what it is. End type. Generate switch labels. There we go. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh. Great. Thanks, Precator. Uh, anyway, um, uh, so, so let's see. That'll be how we apply an escape, and this will be uh, apply death. Um, there are no inventory items on that one. Uh, the inventory gets cleared. We would apply death, uh, level number, and points. So realistically, the first thing you so we do all of these, and then uh, we call that. So let's do this. So we're gonna make a method. We're gonna extract this. We're gonna make this one private. And this is going to be um, foo for now, but we'll fix that in a second. Um, Uh, we'll say apply end game. So that's that stuff, and then we add items only if we apply if we did an escape. So let's pull this out as a parameter. So that's the end type. Whoops! Rename that to end type. There we go. Then in the other one. Um, it's really just a pass through for that, at which point I really wonder whether or not we should keep that separate or not, or just do the check here. So we clear the items no matter what. Mm, yeah, not, not keen on that. Let's do this. We're just going to apply an end game. And we'll only add the inventory items. So this will just be the last parameter. And it can be null. So we'll do that. And then we'll just say this at the end. So we'll say if end type is not equal died. So basically, as long as you didn't die. We'll do that. And items. Uh, we'll say question mark dot any. We'll say any. Can I get away with that? Empty list? Nope. Alright, we'll do that then. an I list then it's no longer an enumerable it's now an I list all right so apply end game is now what we're gonna call regardless so we're gonna get rid of this 
whole big structure that I just did here. We're switching back to this, but just calling it a different differently. So we're gonna say apply end uh, what? Oh, it's private. Derp, 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 derp. This one was private. There we go. Fixed. Uh, so let's remember that apply end game level number points um, end type inventory items. Uh, I went to array. I'm gonna go to to list, just not and not worry about it. So those will be the inventory items. They come in like that. Uh, so that gets us those. We'll apply end game. We'll pass that in. Uh, and then we're saying that we clear them out and we only add the new ones if you didn't die. Okay, so what that means now is that this value needs to get mapped. And I'm not 100% that it's going to. Um, we said died and escaped. Uh, let me see what we called it down here. Um, died... Yeah, where did I define end types? End types died and end types escaped. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, those are... Yeah, they were over there. Okay, I remember where that came from now. Let's take a look at this. So I changed end type to that, and if you print this that should I hope treat it as a string we're about to find out uh, I'm gonna restart the bot and we'll t take a look at what this data is so here goes that should be shutting down now the bot is being killed and we'll see if I've waited long enough for it to die as we try to start up the project again Ooh, I might not have waited long enough. Might not be dead yet. That is not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. There we go. There's the bot. We see you. You said hello. Okay, so I came in with my bat. We're gonna kill that guy, we're gonna walk over here, we're gonna keep using our axe. Eat the pizza for health. Uh, am I supposed to die this time? No, we're testing this first. So I'm gonna escape with a one-use sword. So when I do that, I should exit. Uh, has escaped on level 3 with 149 points. Perfect. Okay, so that means the values are making it up there. We are saying whether or not we escaped or died. Uh, so I escaped, which means that I should have the data. If I take a look at that and we view the data there. There's my sword with one use. Perfect. If we start it again, and this time we try to die... One use sword. Game over. Okay, so this is passing up no items, which is the weirdest case. Uh, so has died on level two with 23 points uh, while holding nothing. All right, refresh this. I should have blanked that out. There's the sword. I was holding nothing, so it handles the empty collection case just fine. Now the weird part is that it seems like I've changed the number of uses on axes to be one now that I've done that. So the next axe I pick up is probably going to be another one-use axe. Uh, no, um, sword, I mean. There's a two-use axe. Meant to say sword. Sword. 
now that I have used the axe... Okay, it came in with two as well. Is there something special about the sword? Why is the sword uses getting adjusted? Was it because I loaded in with that one? So now I came in with the axe. Okay, so the sword came in with one use. Again. Ah, uh, that's weird. Um, let me take a look at the item builder. We're not building the way I thought we would be. I think. Might be the problem. Create item from item data. Creates a new item object each time. Is that changing the item data when we do that? Let's have a look. Hang on. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what the data looks like. Um I bet that's the problem. Uh so if we go to the item builder, which is right here, uh create item from data. Yeah. So we're going to drop a breakpoint right there. Scroll all the way down again. We're going to start up a new game. <coughs> Wants to create an axe. What's the data on axe? Uses too. Okay. Let's move those two breakpoints. Okay, that's creating a black can, that's fine. Okay, it's creating a new axe. Axe uses two. Okay, that's also correct. escape again. Hey, Zoltra Lord, welcome. Uh, let's take a look at the overall data. Sword uses is now one. How did sword uses value get changed? What changed that? This should never have been modified. So, oh, it must be. So I think I'm right. I think it is from when we were loading. Uh, hey, Zoltar Lord, we are uh, currently. I'm trying to fix a bug in the game. Uh, I bet when I adjusted uses, I changed the item data uses. Ah, yes. Um, we're gonna do it there. Um. That's what did it. Okay, so create item from item data. Uh, we're gonna say uses. If uses is not undefined, so if we set that value, instead of saying item data, we're gonna set the item uses. Actually, let's just do it here. If uses is undefined, then uses will equal that value. And we'll pass in uses here. 
Uh, oh, uh, Zoltalord, what the heck? Triple equals. What is triple equals? Uh, so, first off, uh, welcome, uh, Sigmonic. Uh, thank you very much for that follow. Greatly appreciated. And uh, s &B, hey, greetings, greetings, greetings. Uh, oh, Zoltalord, so the idea is in JavaScript, one of the uh, things that makes it a little bit different is JavaScript really tries to succeed. Um, and the idea is that uh, if you use double equals, that says, hey, try and match up the types and see if these are still equal. So it'll convert sometimes. It'll, it'll take stuff and try to make that equality be able to happen. Uh, if you say triple equals, that includes a type check. So this is the same kind of equality that you're used to in a language like C-sharp, where we uh, include a type in the definition of equality in most cases. Although we should be clear as Ultralord, in C-sharp we can define, uh, we can override the equality operator and handle it however we want. So we don't actually have the safety we believe we do. Anyway, um, so we're going to say uh, uses, so if it's defined, use that. Otherwise, uh, we are going to... Uh, set the value equal to the one that came in from there. So that we don't mess that up anymore and I don't break things. Let's stop breaking things, Brendan. Sounds like a good plan. W start. There we go. Uh, so we're creating an item for a bat. And we're gonna, we don't have uses set, so we're gonna use the item data that we got from that. Uses one. Okay, so I escape with my axe that still has two uses. That looks great. Uh, let's see. What did people mention? Uh, that's just runs. Oh, Wicked Blue Ninja. That's awesome. I'm glad you're learning C Sharp. It's actually a very fun language. Uh, JavaScript is the most passive aggressive language. You messed up, but I'm not going to tell you and instead just make your life harder later. Uh, Greendolph, that's so not only is, is uh, JavaScript like that, uh, but it's the same kind of thing in HTML in a lot of cases. It'll be like, well, you messed this up. I'm still going to work, uh, but I'm going to cause you some insidious problems because you missed an end tag and you're not going to be able to figure out what's wrong. Uh, so they do the same kind of thing. Uh, the web is really a, a terrible place for that. <laughs> do you know any highly recommended auto body shops wow well that's good that's good recommended huh all right so we escape with that and that jerk gets to attack me I'm gonna pick up a bat, kill that guy, and I escape with no items. Uh, but that's fine. That's fine. There we go. Uh, and then again, uh, we're coming through, and everything looks like I'm getting the correct number each time. Oh, I'm dead. I can't escape. Bummer. No escape for me. Uh, you should add pirates. Do you know how much they pay for corn? Uh, Will, so I am planning on adding other stuff. Right now, all we've got are the zombies in our uh, little survivor game. Uh, but we've got various other things. Uh, some people might have been paying attention and noticed that I added an underground escape. Um, uh, instead of a helicopter pad. Uh, as another way of getting out of here. Uh, so this is, uh, we are, 
So that is using those. This is something different. So that is... Um, Save items with uh, escape only. Uh, and this is uh, fix item uh, use, fix starting item use bug. There we go. So those are fixed. Uh, oh, ah, 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 they pay a buccaneer for corn. Oh, man, Will. Oh, jeez. Oh, man, I am, I am dying over here. Uh, man, I may not survive. That was, that was hilarious. Okay, uh, so that works. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and, so, okay, so we die, we survive, we survive. We get to leave with items. Let's add a couple of helper uh, methods. So first things first. So we have a we have team command. Uh, we shall start command. Let's do this. Um, class inventory uh, command. Okay, so we're gonna make an inventory command that's gonna work kind of like the team command does in by default. Uh, well, actually, no, it's gonna work like the team's list, I think. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We need to have, in addition to this, we need to have the I game uh, repository. Uh, I survivor. Oh, ooh, maybe we just need a survivor repo. We're gonna add in a survivor repo. We're gonna add that. Uh, and when you call for this, we are going to say, um, grab a repo, get or create, given the event args dot chat user. This will get your survivor object. Hang on, I see a whole bunch of stuff happening in chat. Uh, <laughs> exactly, Will. Uh, bombing chat with the dad jokes for the win. Uh, yeah, there you go. Happy fun time. Uh, yes, we are survivors. And, uh... Endorn? Uh, I'm guessing? Welcome, thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. <laughs> Greetings, hey! Alright, uh, let's see. Survivor dot... Uh, inventory items... So I want to create a message out of this, so let's um, say string.join. We're going to do a little list, and we're going to pass in the inventory items, uh, but just the, uh, but we need to select the values we want off of this. So we're going to say select item, and we're going to say item name and then inside of parens we're gonna have the uses and then we're gonna say item dot uses uh, let's do this extract that as Um, item text. Awesome, Endorn. I got it right. Glad to hear it. Uh, so we're going to join this, and this will be um, message. Uh, so then we'll say chat client dot uh, send direct message uh, to the chat 
the event args chat user dot display name we're going to send them a message so the bot is going to send you your inventory uh, as a private message and I actually think I want to do it like this so we're gonna say uh, you have these items okay there we go so you have these items fantastic glad to hear it Chatosaurus is a superhero absolutely is and uh, welcome Kai greetings thank you very much for that follow uh, and if anybody else is in here and is enjoying the stream at all make sure you hit that follow button to get notified when we go live next which by the way we go live next tomorrow uh, and we will have a guest with us tomorrow uh, uh, coins actually should have worked I think uh, but hang on I'm gonna restart the bot anyway to adjust for these changes okay uh, so we're gonna create this new command this new inventory command uh, and then inside of our startup in here I am going to add this uh, explicitly right here as a command that gets run that's the inventory command whoa wait why do you have to include something for that Oh, I put it inside of operations. What? Why did I put it inside of operations? That was derpy. Derp. All right. Hopefully that's fixed now. Uh, we have this running. Um, base dot. There's cooldown help text. Um, we won't have any requirements for that. We'll make you that. We'll give you that. Okay. Uh, Ancient Coder, uh, if anyone is interested in finding out who our guest is going to be, I recommend you go to our GitHub at github.com slash devchatter, which I will link uh, to that in the chat in a moment. And um, there are links down below the stream or video as well. Uh, and then in the stream info, so if you, it'll take you here when you take that link at github.com slash devchatter. You click here on stream info, and you can usually find out who my upcoming guests are. Uh, so tomorrow, this is our guest. Uh, so that is the information about tomorrow's stream. I will toss this over here in the chat so you can all see that. Um, I'm going to guess uh, see ya. Um, but maybe I'm butchering your name, but welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, let's see. Commit to TypeScript for the next project end of year resolution. Uh, Will, uh, I might do TypeScript on one of our uh, upcoming projects. Uh, I might want to do F Sharp as well. Uh, we'll see. Uh, get everyone on board for the roguelike, then charge 25 bits per life to play. Oh, Echo Strike. That's brilliant. I should totally do that. Uh, you should make the characters battle cry. You will never call the apply death method on me. <laughs> Thanks, Echo Strike. That's great. Uh, okay, so. Alright, uh, where was I? I was here. I just created this. I am going to try running this just to see what happens. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Fuel Snable and Will, uh, you guys are going to hold me to that. I do intend to do some F Sharp on the stream. Uh, that was actually. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, I originally started planning this stream that we do here today back in 2015. Uh, when some of my coworkers said, hey, you should be live streaming. That would be really cool. I'd love to watch you write some code. And I was like, huh, that's weird. Um, I mean, I guess I could. And I kind of was like, yeah, maybe. Uh, and then a few months go by and I'm like, you know what? I think they're right. I think I should. Uh, so then towards the end of, um, uh, yeah, Dev Chatterbot, exactly. He's here. Uh, so towards the end of 2015, I was like, yeah, I should start doing that. And so I started planning things out and I actually set up... Uh, that's actually when I picked up devchatter.com. 
uh, started setting up all the accounts and various streaming services and started planning out my streams. Uh, one of the things I planned to do, Will, uh, I planned to do back then uh, was F Sharp Fridays. I wanted to do F Sharp Fridays back in 2015. I still have not done any F Sharp uh, on the stream, I should say. Um, Mr. F uh, Mr. Faisal, Mr. Faisal, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for uh, hanging out. We're doing pretty well here, and. Uh, Laloprog, uh, which I probably butchered that name, and if I did, I apologize. But uh, welcome, both of you. Thanks for following. Um, greatly appreciated. And uh, if anybody else is in here and hasn't clicked the follow button, you should. Best way to know when the streams are going to happen here. Uh, let's see. So I want to start this up again. Okay, so that should have started a game, which is this one. Whoops, I should have gone the other way. That was dumb, Brendan. Game over. Okay, so I exit with a sword with a value of three, so that's pretty darn awesome. Uh, I am thrilled by that. Now this one I'm going to have to test on my, on my own because the bot is supposed to whisper to me. So what I'm going to do is just to make sure this works, I'm going to whisper to it first. Because uh, I want it to definitely be allowed to whisper to me. So I think I called the command inventory. Uh, hang on. I got a message. You have these items, sword three. Okay, that's pretty cool. So the bot whispered to me and it told me my items. So there we go. Let's try that again, but without any items. Uh, hmm. You followed. You should have... Uh, the bot must not have been uh, running when you followed. Uh, would be my guess uh, on that one. But here you go. Have 100 coins. Uh, yes, Will. It whispered sweet nothings. Uh, so, our inventory, if we were to clear that out, say, like this, by dying... Oh, oh, there's two swords. I, I cannot resist two swords. That's, that's just too sweet. Who wouldn't want to escape with two swords? Come on! Wow, Jensen, that's a lot of coins. Nice. Uh, Echo Strike, do you not have enough coins? Sword, sword. That's really neat. Uh, so there's the swords. There's two of them, two full swords. Uh, Green Dolph has a good number of tokens. Uh, so does Echo Strike. I don't know why you weren't able to give those tokens there, Echo Strike. You should have been able to. Uh, but I still want to do a couple of things. Uh, I want to take a look at when I whisper for the inventory. Inventory. I should get a whisper, which I did. You have these items, Sword 3, Sword 3. So that's awesome. That, that worked exactly the way I expected. Uh, so it does report multiple items if we, if we have multiple items in our inventory. So if we die, so let's go ahead and do that. I will not survive this time and we'll check the inventory, make sure nothing breaks. Uh, do, do, do. Game over. Oh no, I died with my two swords. Okay. Huh. Actually, I'm not supposed to be listed in that. There's, there's a bug. I should not be listed in the top command. Uh, but anyway, uh, there we go. So now if I try inventory, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say that in chat again. Inventory. I get my whisper as per usual. You have these items. 
and it just gave me back a blank message. Uh, so let's do this. Um, how did I say uh, none before? I um, guess I could do this. Message is either that. Or, uh, oh, no, it's this piece. Uh, item text gets joined uh, when we do that. Okay. <laughs> Coated beard, all you're lurking is finally paying off. There you go. It's exactly what you wanted. As many coins as you can possibly fit. Uh, inline that variable. There we go. Uh, so now this is the message that we create. No, that's not the variable. Uh, I wanted item text. Uh, let's extract this and then inline. Uh, that's going to be foo. Now let's inline this into foo. Um, call that... Yeah, well, that'll be item text. There we go. So we'll say... Uh, Extract this as a variable just because it's nicer. We'll call this items. If I'm going to repeat it twice, I'd rather have it just be items. So we'll say if items.any do that. Whoops. Items.any do that. Else, we're going to say none. So there we go. Items any, join that or none. There we go. You have these items. None. And we'll put a period on the end. Okay, cool. Alright, uh, what's going on in chat? Uh, yes, Crichton, you need to lurk more. Everybody needs to lurk more. Alright. Um, do, do, do. Change that there. So this is going to require a bot restart in order for that to work. Uh, so I will do that real fast. First off, I'm going to click a hand. F I'm going to click that link, which is going to spam some stuff. Uh, Fleisch, uh, thank you for that. Much appreciated on the lurk. Everybody here is welcome to lurk if they like. I have no complaints about that. You never have to chime in, say anything. You can keep me on in the background. Just listen to my uh, nice voice. If that's what you're into, that's fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. And I'm currently letting the bot restart. Uh, hopefully it took its time and is fully dead there. Uh, but if not, we're about to find out, because uh, I'm trying to start it up again. Uh, looks like I didn't give it enough time, because it's not going there. But now it should be good. Come on, you can do it, bot. You can do it. There we go. Uh, Wirex, you're learning JavaScript. Uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, and uh, yeah, I would agree. I would not say that JavaScript is, is uh, necessarily an easy language. There's a lot of weird things about JavaScript. Um, are you uh, new to programming or just new to JavaScript, Wirex? Um... Okay, so I guess I'm escaping with no items again. Uh, new to programming in general, that's awesome! Uh, glad to hear it! Wirex, that's, uh, that's always an awesome thing. Uh, we actually do a Learn to Code in C Sharp series here. It's not the same as JavaScript, but we are trying to teach new developers as well. It's a really cool thing, so um, I'm glad you're learning uh, uh, some, some coding, because it's quite fun. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try our inventory command again, because now we want it to say none. Uh, you have these items, none, so you guys aren't seeing that, but trust me, it worked. Um, uh, let's see, what did... Uh, oh, you're loving it. That's glad to hear it, Wyrex. Uh, and Greendoff, it bugs you that uh, a ton of projects are aimed at making coding accessible focus on JavaScript. Uh, yeah, Greendoff, I can understand the problem. I, I, I get why they pick JavaScript. I think they pick it because it is... Uh, ubiquitous it is in all kinds of devices 
Um, but yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think you'd be much better off learning a variety of other languages that are easier to understand, especially for beginners. Uh, so yes, Lua, Python, and C Sharp are great learning languages. Uh, so yep, yeah, I would agree with that. And uh, Will is is also very correct there. Coding is one of the best hobbies that you can pick up. So if you started with C Sharp and still find his coding to make more sense than JavaScript. <laughs> I I will agree with that, Wyrix. I will agree with that. That's not to say that there are not problems with uh, statically typed languages like C Sharp, um, but they are far less confusing than a language like JavaScript. So, yeah, I totally, totally get that. Okay, so, uh, so this is adding an inventory command. So, adding inventory command. Uh, so we need a basic inventory command, uh, and the reason I say that is because I eventually want to have the ability in chat to be able to add items before you go adventuring. So before you go out on a quest, you might add an item. Um, we also might want to make it so that other people can give you an item to start out your quest. Uh, so someone else might be like, you know, here, have, have you know, have my axe. Um... You know, it's like, you have my bow and my axe, and uh, yeah, anyway. Um, jailbreak, welcome. Thanks very much for that follow. Greatly appreciate it. If anyone else is in here in the chat and hasn't clicked that follow button, please make sure you do so. Uh, statically typed languages uh, do have a steeper learning curve for the first little while, but the static typing quickly turns into a learning advantage. Yes, screened off precisely. Uh, Wyrex, um, this which course. Uh, so... There are a bunch of episodes you can actually find on our YouTube uh, channel, actually, right now. Uh, so if you take a look here, that link I just posted in chat gets you to our uh, schedule here. I'm going to be scheduling more episodes, so that is future scheduled streams uh, of our uh, channel here, where we're going to do more episodes where we're teaching people how to program in C Sharp. So we're starting beginner level programmers and um, essentially teaching coding right here on the stream. Uh, so you can get reminders for this if you click the link in chat, and there are probably links to it down below as well. Uh, but this is also actually out on our YouTube channel, so if you go to uh, our YouTube channel, which actually, hang on one second, let me load that up. Uh, seriously? YouTube, you're taking this long? Why is YouTube going slowly? Also, I should definitely mention to people that you should click on uh, our Discord link as well. Because uh, it is definitely worth checking out our Discord. Uh, so, in our YouTube channel, there we go, you will find under the playlist section a handful of playlists, including one called Learn to Program in C Sharp. Uh, so, this is where we have that playlist. If you open it up, you'll see that these are our old episodes. So, that's Learn to Code Episode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and. Um, that must be seven that I did not put the episode number on, uh, which I should fix that name. But that's that's how it's set up. <laughs> Crichton, awesome. Take care. Uh, thanks. Have a good one. Uh, so you can find all this stuff out there. There's actually all kinds of videos. So plenty of videos for uh, you know whatever you want to look at out there on uh, our YouTube channel. Okay, so. Um, Inventory is working. As I said, I want to make it so that other people can affect that inventory, and then we need to make, like, um, events and other stuff happen and start tracking that data. So we're going to take a look at that. It should be quite fun. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are going to be doing a special stream tomorrow. I'm going to have a guest on the stream. She'll be up in that corner up there, uh, you know, with a nameplate and everything, and uh, we will be using VS Live Share. If you haven't seen VS Live Share, it's really cool. I recommend you show up again tomorrow. Uh, it is basically what's going to allow us to collaborate inside of Visual Studio on some things. Um, Echo Strike, we will be adding some element of multiplayer potentially. Uh, the challenge with doing that for a roguelike game is that um, in a roguelike, uh, you have to both give commands. So it could be that you each give a command and then I wait for that to be accepted and then we perform the move. Uh, but that could get really slow waiting for two people to take actions each time. 
Uh, so that might be a little slow for people to watch. Um, so we'll see. Um, for now, everybody can control the same guy. So you guys were actually able to input movements for my character if you wanted. Um, and I don't know whether or not we're keeping that or not. We'll decide. Whew. Excuse me. Um, so let me click this. Is anybody... No? Uh, is anybody over here? No? Uh, huh. Okay, well. Uh, either way. Um... Click these couple of couple of buttons here. Yeah. Um, as I said, we'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, I think I'm gonna wrap the stream about now. Let me go ahead and run the credits so don't go anywhere just yet, because uh, I do want to mention a couple of things. Uh, first off, I want to make sure I thank everybody that showed up today. Uh, and, and just viewed and watched, really appreciate it. I want to thank our moderators for helping out today. I know I saw Green Dolph and Stool Penner and s &B hanging out and helping out with things, so much appreciated. Uh, and then we had a whole bunch of people that followed, so always, always thank you for following. And uh, Rubix, uh, thank you for that, uh, what was it, four-month resub? Uh, greatly appreciated. So uh, we always appreciate when people subscribe to the channel. If you want to be a subscriber to this channel, uh, you can do so pretty easily. Just click the subscribe button. Uh, it's not very expensive, but if you are actually an Amazon Prime uh, subscriber already, you actually get a free channel subscription on Twitch every month. Uh, so you could subscribe to Dev Chatter using that and get access to our emotes and everything else. And uh, anyway, uh, let's see. What's everybody saying? Your Discord's going on and off. I broke the internets. What? Uh, I didn't break the internets. Uh, so, everyone, thank you for hanging out today. Uh, be sure to check out our Discord, our GitHub. If you want to contribute to the project, everyone is actually welcome to submit pull requests to us. It's always appreciated. And take care, everyone. Happy coding, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.